Hi guys, I'm Luke and today we're going to talk about how to pronounce the ED sound in regular past tense verbs. We're going to talk about how to make the three different ED sounds when using verbs in the past tense. This is an area of English pronunciation that many students, even advanced students, find quite difficult. So, there are three different pronunciations we use for the ED. They are the T and id. Let's first look at the d ending sound. Listen for the d ending sound in these past tense verbs. Called, cleaned, loved. So, did you hear a soft d sound at the end of these words? Even though these words are spelt with an ed, they do not end with an id sound. Instead, they end with the d sound. So, what's the rule? How can you know when to use the d sound for past tense verbs? Well, let's first look at these words without the ed, in their infinitive form. They are pronounced call, clean, and love. The final sound of these words are consonants. The final sound in call is l, in clean is n, and in love is v. L, n, and v are voiced consonant sounds. English has voiced and unvoiced consonants. To make a voiced consonant, you have to use your vocal cords. So when I say the v sound in the word love, I'm using my vocal cords. And when I touch my throat, I can feel it vibrating. V. And the same is for l and n. So the rule is that when a verb ends in a voiced consonant sound, then the past tense, ed, is pronounced as d. Called, cleaned, loved. There is one more rule you should know for the d sound for past tense verbs. So look at the word play. What's the last sound in play? Right, it is a. And a is a vowel sound. So the second rule is that verbs that end in a vowel also take the d sound when they are used in the regular past tense. Now let's look at the t ending sound. So a few examples are walked, helped, washed, and danced. Can you hear the t at the end of these words? Again, even though these words are spelt with an ed, they are pronounced with a t sound. So why do we use the t for these words? Well, let's find out. How do we say these words in their infinitive form without an ed? Well, it's like this. Walk, help, wash, and dance. What we need to pay attention to is how these words end. What's the last sound in these words? Walk, k, help, p, wash, sh, and dance, s. K, p, sh, and s are all unvoiced consonant sounds. So we don't use our vocal cords to make an unvoiced sound. If you touch your throat and say these words, k, p, sh, and s, you can't feel any vibration in your throat. So regular verbs that end in an unvoiced sound take the t for the past tense ed. Walked, helped, washed, danced. The last pronunciation for the ed sound is id. Id. For example, wanted, started, needed, ended. These are verbs which in their infinitive form end in a t or d sound. So the rule is simple. If a verb ends in a t or d, the past tense ed is pronounced as id. So these are the three ways of pronouncing the past tense ed sounds. The next time you're having trouble trying to decide how to pronounce an ed sound, you can use these rules to help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, this is your English teacher Luke. So how can we pronounce this word? Is it often or is it often? Are both correct? Is it okay to pronounce this word with the t sound? Simply, yeah, it's totally fine. This word has two acceptable pronunciations, often and often.
Both pronunciations are presented in the Cambridge and Oxford dictionaries and are widely used by lots of people in native English-speaking countries. But why are there two pronunciations for the same word? Well, actually, the history is quite interesting. So originally, this word was pronounced with the T sound, often. But then, in around 1700, the T got dropped and it just became often. However, recently, in the past 80 years or so, the T sound has slowly made its way back into this word. And now we have two acceptable pronunciations, often and often. I'm more inclined to pronounce this word with a T, often. But this is just because that's the way my parents pronounce it and the way most people in my hometown pronounce this word. But I also have friends that just say often, and that's totally fine. So remember, both pronunciations are absolutely correct, and don't listen to anyone who says otherwise. But how about the other words which have a similar spelling? Words that end in F-T-E-N or S-T-E-N. Can you pronounce the T sounds in these words? Actually, mostly not. So let's take a look at some examples. The first one is listen. Listen. Did you hear any T sound? No, there is no T in the pronunciation of this word. The T in the spelling is totally silent. Then we have soften. Soften. Again, no T sound. And here are some more examples. We have fasten. Fasten. Hasten. Hasten. And christen. Christen. There is no T sound in any of these words when we pronounce them. The T in the spelling is completely silent. So the general rule is that if a word ends in F-T-E-N or S-T-E-N, then the T is silent. We don't pronounce the T. But with the word often or often, the T is acceptable. English has quite many irregular spelling and pronunciation patterns, which makes it quite a difficult language for learners like you to learn. But that's just the way it is. So which pronunciation do you prefer? Often or often? Let me know below in the comments. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you next time. See you. Hey guys, one of the best things you can do to sound more like a native English speaker is to use contractions when you're speaking. Contractions are when two or more words join together and get shortened. We do this all the time when we're speaking English simply because contractions are easier to say and let us speak smoother and faster. It's really important that you're able to understand and use contractions. So in this video, I'm going to show you five easy and frequently used contractions that can help you in your spoken English. The first one is hafta. Hafta. So what do you think this means? Well, it's a contraction of have to. Have to is quite difficult to say when you're trying to speak quickly, so we make it easier for ourselves by changing it to have to. Repeat after me. Have to. Let's do a sentence. I have to leave now because I have to use the toilet. You have to study English every day. So guys, just to let you know, these contractions are only used in spoken English. Don't use them in written English because they are inappropriate for written English. But for spoken English, it's totally fine. Okay, the next one is... Dunno. Dunno. This one is super common and you probably already know it. Dunno means don't know. Basically, the T sound at the end of don't gets dropped because when you're speaking quickly, the T is a little bit difficult to say. And then don in don't becomes done. So put it together, dunno, dunno. Let's take a look at some sentences. I don't know where I am. There are too many movies on Netflix. I don't know which one to watch. Kinda. Kinda means kind of. You've probably noticed that of, like in kind of, quite often just becomes a and joins with the previous words. This happens in many, many examples. In this one, it is kinda, kinda. For example, 
I'm kinda tired. I should probably go to bed. What kind of movies do you like? Yeah, he's kinda cool. The next one is Lemmy. Lemmy. What do you think this means? Well, this one is a contraction of let me. Again, look here. The t sound at the end of let gets dropped and it just becomes lemmy. Lemmy is much easier to say than let me, isn't it? So let's do a couple sentences. So maybe you're in a very busy subway station or somewhere very busy and you want to get to the front or you just want to get through a crowd, you can say this. Excuse me, can you let me through, please? Excuse me, can you let me through, please? Or maybe you're a teacher like I am and when you give your homework to your students, you say this. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, the last one for this video is wanna. Wanna. This one is another very well-known contraction and it just means want to. Look again, the t sound at the end of want gets dropped and it becomes wanna. Wanna. For example, I want to go to Brazil. We want to eat a big chocolate cake for dessert. Okay, here's a quick grammar tip for wanna. You can use it with the subject I, I wanna, you, you wanna, we, we wanna, they, they wanna. They are fine, they are correct, but you cannot use wanna with he, she, or a name. So you can't say he wanna, or she wanna, or Luke wanna. That is incorrect. Okay, that's it from me today. Try to use these contractions the next time you speak in English and I'm sure you'll sound much more natural. Okay, see you next time. Hey guys, I've got a quick test for you. How do you pronounce this word? How about this one? And this one? So what do these words have in common? Well, these are all words that are commonly pronounced wrongly by many English learners because they have a silent syllable. Wait, what's a silent syllable? What's even a syllable? Well, a syllable is a pronunciation unit which has one vowel sound. Some words have one syllable and some have five syllables. For example, cat only has one syllable. Teacher has two and dinosaur has three syllables. But some words in English have silent syllables. That means that some syllables in their spelling of the words are not pronounced when you are speaking the word. So in this video, we're gonna look at five common words which have silent syllables. This is the first one. How do you pronounce this word? How many syllables does it have? Many students pronounce this word with four syllables, comfortable. But that's not how most native speakers say this word. So listen to how I say this word. Comfortable. Comfortable. How many syllables did you hear? Right, only three. This word has a silent syllable that's in its spelling, but when you speak it, you don't say it. So repeat after me. Comfortable. Comfortable. In a sentence, this bed is so comfortable. This bed is so comfortable. So how about this word? How many syllables do you think this has? Well, again, this word only has three syllables. It's pronounced temperature. Temperature. Many students pronounce this word with four syllables, but that's not how it's mostly pronounced. It's almost always pronounced with just three syllables. Repeat after me. Temperature. Temperature. This word also has a silent syllable, so the spelling and the pronunciation don't match exactly. So let's look at a sentence. The temperature has risen by five degrees. The temperature has risen by five degrees. How about this one? Does it have three syllables or just two? Yeah, right, this one only has two syllables. Different, different. Many students say this with three syllables, but that's not correct. It only has two syllables. Repeat after me. Different, different. 
Let's do a sentence. We have very different personalities. We have very different personalities. Okay, this one is frequently pronounced incorrectly. How do you say it? Do you say interesting with four syllables or do you say interesting with three syllables? Well, this word is pronounced with three syllables. Again, this word has a silent syllable, so the spelling and the pronunciation don't match exactly. Repeat after me. Interesting. Interesting. Let's do a sentence. This pronunciation lesson is so interesting. This pronunciation lesson is so interesting. Okay, this is a short word, but even though it's short, it still has a silent syllable. Many students say this word with three syllables, but it only has two syllables. Repeat after me. Every. Every. In a sentence, you should study English every day. You should study English every day. So as you can see from this lesson, there are many words in English which have silent syllables. What other words do you know which have silent syllables? Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi guys, I'm your English teacher Luke and today we're going to look at some English words which have alternative pronunciations. Actually, there are quite many words in English that have alternative pronunciations. So I hope this video will help you with this confusing feature of English. So let's start with this very common word. How do we pronounce this word? Is it either with a long E or is it either with an I? Which one do you think is correct? Well, both are correct. This word can be pronounced either or either. It's the same for this word. It can be neither or neither. Again, both pronunciations are acceptable. This is not a regional thing. It's just simply that there are two pronunciations for the same word. I personally tend to pronounce these words as either and neither. I don't really know why I do that. It's just the way I do it. How about you? Do you pronounce these words with a long E, like either and neither? Or do you pronounce them with an I, like either and neither? Let me know below in the comments. And because English is quite a difficult language to learn, there are more examples of words with alternative pronunciations. So let's take a look at a few now. So this word can be pronounced like data or data. Some people use data, some people use data. I'm not really sure why. Personally, I like to say data. This word can be envelope or envelope. Again, both are acceptable. This one can be privacy or privacy. Both are acceptable in British English. However, I think in American English, they tend to use the word privacy. This word can be pronounced innovative or innovative. In the UK, both are acceptable. In America, again, I think it's the latter, innovative, which is much more common. And of course, we have this word, often and often. Both are acceptable. So these were some examples of words in English which have alternative pronunciations. Can you think of any more examples? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, that's it from me. I hope this lesson was useful and I'll see you next time. See you. Hey everyone, I'm Luke and in this English lesson, we're going to study the pronunciation of S endings. So simply, words ending in S. S endings are so common in English. Verbs can end in S, plural nouns can end in S, contractions can also end in S. So it's very important that you know how to pronounce the S at the end of these words. And there are three ways that the S can be pronounced. It can be S, Z and Is. So now let's look at some examples and the rules for using the correct pronunciation of S. Let's start with the s ending sound. For example, likes, stops, laughs, sports, and baths. Did you hear the s sound at the end of these words? Yeah, these ones are pretty easy because the spelling and pronunciation match. 
The letter S is pronounced as S. That's easy. But how do we know when to use the S sound? Is there a rule? Well, firstly, we have to look at the sound that comes right before the S. So let's remove the S sound to find out. We have like, k, stop, p, laugh, f, sport, t, and bath, th. K, p, f, t, and th are all unvoiced consonants. English has voiced and unvoiced consonants. With unvoiced consonants, you don't use your vocal cords. So if you touch your throat and say the sounds, you don't feel any vibration at all. So the rule is you need to use the s sound for words that end in an unvoiced consonant. Likes, stops, laughs, sports, baths. Now let's take a look at the z ending sound. For example, dogs, words, loves, dreams, and sings. These words all end with the z ending sound. But, but why? What's the rule here? Again, we need to look at the sound right before the z. So let's remove that and see what we have. We have dog, g, word, d, love, v, dream, m, and sing, ing. And these are all examples of, right, they are voiced consonants. Voiced consonants use your vocal cords in your throat. So if you put your fingers to your throat and say a voiced consonant, you can feel it vibrate. G, d, v. So the rule is, you need to use the z sound for words that end in a voiced consonant. Dogs, words, loves, dreams, sings, fans, feels, wears, jobs. There's one more thing with the z ending sound. All words ending in a vowel also use the z sound for the s. For example, plays, trees, toes. The third one is is. Buses, boxes, changes, watches, finishes, prizes. This is ending sound is represented by the es spelling. So that makes it much easier to identify and to know when to use this sound. So that's good. But without going into lots of detail, is there a rule for using is? Well, yes, there is. Words that end in s, x, j, ch, sh, and z always use the is pronunciation for words ending in the es spelling. Buses, boxes, changes, watches, finishes, prizes. So these are the three ways of pronouncing the S sound in English words. The next time you're having trouble trying to decide how to pronounce an S sound, you can use these rules to help you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later. So yes, like I said, today we're going to do linking. We'll give you first some explanations, then some practice, and then we can have an English Q&A session where you can ask me any questions you have about English language, English pronunciation, grammar, language learning, and I'll do my best to help you. Maurizio says hi. Thank hi Maurizio, hope you're doing well. Okay, so then let's let's start. So like I said, today's lesson is about linking. Uh, you can see that from the thumbnail I put up. My nice picture of myself. <laughs> I find it very hard to pose for photos, but Okay, so let's start. So firstly, English speakers do not speak word by word. You all know that. Uh, I'm sure that's the same for many languages. In English, we run our words together. And we run our words together, that means we kind of put, we, we link the last sound of one word to the beginning sound of another word when we can. And we use different forms of connected speech in order to run our words together to make it smoother. If we spoke word by word, it would sound very robotic and, yeah, very difficult to understand. Uh, second language learners. Now, this is a little bit different. So for you guys who are learning a second language, you don't necessarily have to 
use linking or these uh, complicated forms of pronunciation because if you speak slower and word by word the you know everyone can understand you and being understood is of course the main the main purpose of speaking not really to sound smooth however learning things like linking will help you one to sound smoother when you're speaking but more importantly it'll help you with your listening skills so you'll be able to listen much smoother if you're uh, very aware of english pronunciation features so yeah let's let's look at some examples then so in this lesson, I'm going to show you a few guidelines for linking or connecting. Some people call linking connecting. That's fine. Uh, for linking words, which will help you to speak more naturally and smoothly. So let's start with the first part. Consonants to vowel. So this is the easiest form of linking. And I'm sure this happens in a lot of other languages too. Uh, I am living in Korea and I learn Korean whenever I can. And Korean has linking for consonants to vowels. Uh, I'm sure lots of languages too. English does, of course. So firstly, I want you to listen and repeat after me at your home or where, wherever you are, these sentences and see if you can notice the linking. Where does the linking take place? So listen and repeat after me. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? One more time. What do you think about it? So, of course, here, I, I made it easier for you because I made it red, but of course here, the think and about, those words get linked together. Because think, what's the last sound? The last sound is k, which is a consonant, and about, the first sound is a which is, of course, a vowel. So the last consonant, as in think, links to the vowel. Listen again. Think about it. Think about it. What do you think about it? So guys, if you are by yourself, you can speak after me. What do you think about it? So this is a one example. Let me say hi to everyone who's just come here. So we have Kishore from India. Hi. Uh, and also we have... Uh, Yunjung Cha from Japan. Hi, hiya. Your name sounds Korean. Are you Korean or are you Japanese? Even though you're in Japan. Lolly Lolly says hello. And Lullaby says new topic. That's good. Okay, our next example. How do you feel about it? Oh, sorry. How do you feel about? Should be it. Sorry. <laughs> How do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? So again, here we have the last consonant sound, which is L in feel and about the first vowel is a. Uh. So we have feel about. How do you feel about? Uh, Yung Jung says Korean living in Japan. That sounds cool. I love I live in Korea too and I love Japan. So you look lucky you. So listen guys, you can repeat after me. How do you feel about it? Feel about it. How do you feel about it? Next example could be would anyone like to answer? So, would anyone like to answer? Would anyone, anyone, would anyone like to answer? So again, the last consonant sound in would is d, and the first vowel sound in anyone is e, and they link together. And lastly, we have here, I love someone else. I love someone else. Don't say that to your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. <laughs> but anyway, I love someone else. Someone, the last consonant sound is an N, not in the spelling, the spelling is E, but when we are speaking, the last consonant sound, someone is N, and the first vowel sound in else is E. So someone else, all together, I love someone else. So these are some easy examples. This is the easiest one when linking consonant to vowel. And this happens all the time. And I'm pretty sure it happens in lots and lots of other languages too. I, like I said, I'm learning Korean and this definitely happens in Korean. Uh, let's quickly uh, some questions. Um, Lullaby Memo says, so I can, so we connect I with B di directly. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, so in this one, Lullaby, we're linking consonants to vowels. So first is a consonant and second is a vowel. K to a, l to a, d to a, and n to e. So these are 
consonants to vowels. Okay, and uh, a quicker tip for you. So to, to do this smoothly, you can keep your voice going to so try not to stop between words. So you can say, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's crack on becomes let's, let's crack on, let's crack on. So these are examples of linking. This is very common. A lullaby says L to I. Yes, yes, L to I could link too. If you have a word that ends in an L and the next word beginning with I, they would link. Okay, quick practice for you guys. I want you to say this out loud and write it in the chat. Where is the link in in these sentences? So go ahead, write it in the chat room. And I hope you're all having a good day, by the way. If you're new to my live lessons, um, thank you for joining. We have 20 students. Wow, this is uh, quite high for me. Uh, if you have any friends that are learning English, please tell them about my lessons. They can join too. Oh, wait a second. Okay, there we are. Okay, so guys, you can write in the chat. Yoon Jung Cha, are you writing yours in the chat too? And we have Imran, Mirajan, Nadim. Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well today. Thank you for joining this lesson. Um, if you're just arriving to this lesson, we're doing linking today. We're going to do a study, practice, study, practice, study, practice, and then a Q&A. Okay, so let's go through the answers. So here, here's what we have. So we can say, where is he? So we can link where, because that ends in an R sound in most pronunciations. Where is he? Where is he? Uh, then we have this one, number two. Don't laugh at me. So laugh, the last sound is f, and at obviously is a vowel, a. So laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. And then number three, with. The last sound in with is th, and us, the first sound in us is a. Uh, so we link that together. Are you with us? Are you with us? So this is linking number one, consonant to vowel. This is the easiest one, like I mentioned. So I hope you are understanding and following this okay. Uh, let me know in the chat, does linking like this, consonant to vowel, happen in your first language? Uh, like I said, I, I'm studying Korean and I know this does happen in Korean. How about in your language? I know we have Indian, Spanish, French, uh, Vietnamese as well. Yu is here. Hi, Yu. Hope you're doing well. You guys, does this happen in your L1 as well? Let us know in the chat. It'll be very interesting for us to know this. Okay, let me know in the chat and we'll move on to number two. So the second form of linking is vowel to vowel. Now this one is a little bit more difficult, so we'll go through this a little bit slower. Uh, Lolly says, yes, in French, linking does happen. Yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. How about in Spanish and Vietnamese and, and maybe uh, Indian language, whatever language you speak in India? Uh, Raman, I'll answer questions later. Uh, Maurizio says, and where is the stress on, is it on the last sound? Uh, the st where is he? Yes, so for example, uh, the stress, where is he? Where is he? Yes, the last vowel. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. Well, in this case, laugh at, laugh at me. Fat me gets me, gets the stress. Are you with us? Are you with us? Yes, this also gets the stress. So yes, Maurizio, the stress is on the last sound. Good question. Okay, uh, yeah, so guys, you are writing in the chat if your language has linking, and a lot of you are saying yes, it does. So that's interesting. So French, Serbian, does Arabic, not, not, not exactly, but it has diphthongs, which is, which is a kind of a blending of vowels, right? And you says in Vietnamese, you don't have linking. Interesting. 
And Carlos says in Spanish he's not sure, but perhaps um, that they have elision. And elision is another form of pronunciation. I won't talk about elision today. Uh, elision is basically when sounds drop and you remove some sounds. For example, um, uh, what I do. Like, like if, if a sounds like don't tap something, you don't say don't tap. If, this, if there are two sounds that are similar, you drop one of them. That's what elision is. But that, that's not for today's lesson. Okay, so let's move on to linking vowel to vowel. This one's a little bit more tricky. So when a word ends in a vowel and the following word starts in a vowel, usually we link it with a wa or a ya sound in between the two words. So, one more time, when a word ends in a vowel and the following word also starts, and, uh, so when the word ends in a vowel and the following word also starts with a vowel, a wa or a ya can be inserted to link the two words together. Uh, this is sometimes called intrusive, intrusive wa or intrusive ya. Uh, we also, in British English, we have an intrusive r sound, but I won't talk about that today because it gets a little bit complicated. So listen to repeat after me. Uh, where is the link in here? So we have, who are you? Who are you? How often do you study? How often do you study? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? So did you notice any link in here with the, wor with the words which end in a vowel and begin in a vowel? I'll do it one more time. Who are you? Who are you? How often do you study? How often do you study? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? So you might have noticed in these examples, actually there is a link in wa sound in between these two words because who ends in a vowel and ah starts in a vowel and we can't really say those words smoothly without inserting some sort of consonant sound like a wa or a ya. So one more time, who are you? Who are you? How often do you study? How often do you study? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? So there's a wa sound in between these words. As I think this is a quite a, this is quite unique I think to English. We have in an extra wa sound. How about these three here? Listen closely to how I say these three. She is amazing. She is amazing. I agree. I agree. Can you give me an example? Can you give me an example? One more time. She is amazing. I agree. Can you give me an example? Okay, so in these ones, we actually have a... Oops, we actually have a a link in ya sound, a ya sound in between the words which end in a vowel and start with a vowel. So she is, she is amazing. I agree. Can you give me an example? Give me an example. So there are two types of vowel to vowel linking. Typically in most English, we have wa and ya. Uh, the rule is if a vowel in the first word ends in a round vowel. Round vowels, your mouth is more round, like who or how or do. They're quite round. Then the link in is a wa. Who are you? How often do you agree? You agree. If the last vowel in the word is more long, like a e or i or me, then it's more likely to take a ya sound. So, she is amazing. I agree. Can you give me an example? So, this is linking vowel to vowel. Okay, your turn. What is the linking sound between these two words? Can you write it in the chat? So, remember the rule. Round vowel, wa. Long vowel, like this, is more like a ya. So, write in the chat. What's the answer? What is the linking sound? Okay, uh, Mirana says blue eyes with a wa. 
right? Rose, hi Rose, hope you're doing well. One is what? Eleanor says hi. Hi Eleanor, hope you're doing well. Okay, I think you guys are doing very well. Yun Jung Cha, that is correct. Well done. Carlos, uh, yes, number one is Wa, right. right. Uh, by the way, everyone, if you're not following me on social media, you can follow me uh, at these places here. So we have your teacher Luke on Instagram, your teacher Luke on Twitter, and also learn English like a pro on Facebook. Uh, I don't, I'm not very active on social media anymore, but you can still follow me there if you want to. Okay, guys, let's check these answers. All right, so yeah, I hope you got these correct. So we have one is blue eyes, blue eyes. Uh, blue, ooh, is more of a round vowel. So it takes a, the, the link in is more likely to be a wa. Blue eyes, try again. Try is a long vowel, so it's a ya, link in. Try again. Three is a go. O is also a long vowel, so go ahead, go ahead. And she, E is a long vowel, so it takes a ya sound. Okay, so that's linking vowel to vowel. Now let's take a look at consonant to consonant. Now this one is a little bit more complicated again. This is the most complicated form. Um, it has, we call it linking, but uh, another name, if you want to be a bit more specific, is assimilation. So if you want to Google, if you're interested in uh, English pronunciation and you want to Google more examples for consonant to consonant, you can Google assimilation. Uh, assimilation, consonant to consonant, is a much bigger topic than other forms of linking. So I'm just going to show you some simple examples and then Maybe next week or the week after next, I will do a whole lesson on assimilation because there are many other, there are many aspects to it and it's too much to cover just for today. So I'll show you a basic, give you a basic explanation of assimilation and then next, in a couple of weeks, I'll do a lesson on just assimilation. Oops, my phone, sorry, God. All right, oh, so. Oh, okay, so, so let's take a look. So link in consonant to consonant. Uh, Mariana said assimilation is a big topic in her language as well. Yeah, I think it probably is in lots of languages. So, okay, link in consonant to consonant, also known as assimilation. So listen to how I say these word combinations and listen if you can hear any assimilation. So we have individually, that person, but we don't speak like that. Instead, we'll say that person, that person. Next one, good boy. You say good boy, good boy to a dog normally. <laughs> good boy or good girl. And then we have is she ready? Is she ready? Is she ready? And then that class, we have that class, that class. So this is just a, a simple example of assimilation. So it would be pronounced like this. That person becomes more like that person, that person, that person. The T sound is, the T sound is quite difficult to say if the next consonant is a P. That person, that person is very tricky to say. So what happens is that T sound gets assimilated. That means gets changed or becomes adapted to this forward vowel, uh, consonant sound. So it becomes more like that person. Same for this one. Good boy. Good boy is pretty hard, but to make it a bit easier for ourselves, we say good boy, good boy. So it's almost like two B, two, almost two B sounds. Good boy. And then lastly, uh, th thirdly, we have is she ready? Is she is quite tricky to say again. So instead we assimilate the z sound to is she, 
Is she ready? Is she ready yet? And lastly, that class, so t and k sounds, they get assimilated to become that class. That class. So these are some examples of assimilation. This is what we call uh, backwards assimilation. Or more specifically, I think we call it reduced assimilation, but basically backwards assimilation because the consonant, first consonant in the second word goes backwards and changes the last consonant in the first word. So it becomes a difference, almost like it becomes adapted to the, that consonant. So that person, good boy, is she ready? That class. So these are some examples of consonant to consonant assimilation. But like I said, this is a big topic. So this is just, these are just some very simple examples. Uh, one day soon, I promise, I will do a whole lesson just on assimilation, which, yes, mixes sounds, right, Lullaby? It mixes sounds. Hi, Heidi, I hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. I haven't seen you for a long time. Okay, so typically, this assimilation is involved is involved with these consonants t d n s z so if your first word ends in one of these consonants t d z and t again then it usually assimilates and becomes very similar to the next consonant in the next word so one more time that person t here gets assimilated to become that person good boy Good boy, good boy. Duh, gets assimilated with ba. Is she ready? Z sound gets assimilated with sh. So is she ready? And again, t and k here. So t gets assimilated to become that class. So this, these are, this is. Hi everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. My name is Teacher Luke, and welcome to this live English lesson. Today, we're going to talk about common mispronounced words in English. I'll give you some examples of the most commonly, mis commonly mispronounced words and then show you why they are commonly mispronounced so you don't have to make the same mistakes. I hope this will be a fun lesson for you guys. I hope my internet connection is okay. It looked a little bit... A slow earlier but I hope we're doing okay um, if the connection is very poor guys please let me know in the chat box anyway I hope you're all doing well we have some people here already so hi guys I hope you're doing well we have lullaby memo Rokio and uh, I can't pronounce your name I'm sorry but it's uh, Parakia Parakia I hope that's correct Okay, so today, like I mentioned, we're going to talk about common mispronounced words. Hi, Zhonghua. Hi, Christine. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good day and staying safe wherever you are. Hardeep, how are you? Okay, guys, so let's quickly go through my lesson, and at the end, I'll get, we can have a, a Q&A session. That'll be always very fun. Okay. Hello, Gok Dezin. Hope you're doing well. How are you? Hi, Anjay from Germany. Do you know what, Anjay? I studied in Germany when I was younger, just just for one semester, but it was a it was a great experience. Okay, guys. So today we're going to talk about common mispronounced words. I'll give you lots of practice, and at the end we'll do an English Q and A. I hope my uh, reset, my signal and my internet connection is better. It was very slow earlier. But anyway, so let's jump into it. So I did a lesson similar to this on YouTube. You can find it. It's called Words You're Saying Wrong. This lesson focused just on silent syllables, but you can find the link in the description below later, and then you can watch this video. Um, so commonly mispronounced words in English. English spelling doesn't always match its pronunciation. I'm sure as a language learner, you are aware of this. English spelling and English pronunciation are quite different in a lot of cases. This is because of many reasons. One, English is a pretty old language in terms of English writing. So the writing doesn't change, but the pronunciation does change. 
So that means there's a gap between pronunciation and writing. Also, English has a lot of borrowed words, especially from French. So we have a lot of French influence in our spelling, but not in our pronunciation. Lots of reasons why, but English spelling doesn't match the pronunciation. I'm studying Korean at the moment, and I'm very lucky because Korean writing, Korean spelling, and Korean pronunciation match almost exactly. It's really good for learners. That's because the Korean writing, Korean writing system, Hangul, it's called, is only about 500 years old. So the language hasn't adapted that much. Whereas English writing is very old, and the pronunciation has moved away a lot since then. So there is a big gap between the spelling and the pronunciation. So we'll look at some commonly mispronounced words today. Okay, so some examples for you. We have bomb, ghost, and half. Number two, we have chocolate, temperature. And number three, skirt, work, and curse. So I have a quick test for you. Guys, in the chat, write down why, what is, what's wrong with these words? Why do these words have, uh, why are these words often mispronounced? Right, write it in the chat box below. Why, why do you think these words are often mispronounced in English? There's a reason for each set. So, for example, number one has a reason, number two has a reason, and number three has a reason. So go ahead, write in the chat, why do you think these words are commonly mispronounced? Okay, I, th I have a feeling my connection's very slow. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, so let, let's run through together. So the first one, these words are commonly mispronounced because there's a silent letter. The B in bomb is silent. The H in ghost is silent. And the L in F is silent. So listen closely. Bomb, ghost, half. Not bomb, go host, half. These, that's wrongly, that's wrong pronunciation. So there's a silent letter in set one. Set two, listen closely, chocolate, temperature. So actually in set two, there is a silent syllable. Not chocolate or temp temperature. It is chocolate and temperature. So there's a silent syllable. And number three, these words are commonly mispronounced because the vowel sound in all of these words is exactly the same. But of course, the vowel letter is very different. So look close, listen closely. Skirt, work, curse. The vowel sound in these words is exactly the same. Not skirt or work or curse. The vowel sound is all e. Uh. Skirt, work, curse. So these, this number three causes a lot of problems for pronunciation issues. So we're going to go through each one individually and give you lots of examples and lots of practice. Okay, so let's start with silent letters. Hello, Hardeep from India. Hello, hello, uh, Gokdenzin from Turkey. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining my lesson. So silent letters. Words with a silent B. So the B is often silent in lots of words. So what's the rule? Well, the rule is that B is not pronounced after an M at the end of a word. So if the word ends in a B, in a B, but the previous letter is M, then B is not pronounced. For example, dumb, comb, bomb, thumb, and climb. There is no B sound in any of these words. So be careful with these ones. Remember, if the B is at the end and the previous letter is an M, then we don't pronounce the B sound. L yes, lullaby, limb is another great example, yes. Rule number two, B is usually not pronounced before T at the end of a root word. 
For example, debt, doubt, subtle. Subtle doesn't exactly, yeah. So in this case, T is after B in debt, after B in doubt, and after B in subtle. But the B sound is not pronounced in any of these words. Listen again. Debt, doubt, subtle. Debt, doubt, subtle. No B sound whatsoever. A lot of my students say debt, doubt, subtle. <laughs> I understand why, because it's in the writing, but the spelling, the pronunciation is just without the B sound. Hi, Hardeep. Hope you're doing well. So, guys, do you have any more examples of silent words with a silent letter B? There are lots. Uh, Lullaby Memo wrote limb, L-I-M-B. It's a great example. But, of course, it's just pronounced limb, not limb. So what other examples do you know? Write it in the chat box. And while you are, I'm waiting for you, I'm going to say hi to everyone. So we have 18 students. This is amazing. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we have Hardeep, two Hardeeps, <laughs> if you guess that's a popular name. Anje from Germany. Uh, Mauricio, hi, guys. How are you doing? Gok Dendiz from Turkey. Hi, guys. Okay, guys, so do you have any examples? Meg Hannah, hope you're doing well. Hi. Okay, guys. So while you're writing in the box, we'll go to the next one. Next one is a silent G. Silent G. So listen again, this is the rule. G is not pronounced when it comes before an N. For example, champagne. I know that's a French word, but still champagne. Foreign, sign, foreign again, my bad, and design. These are all examples when G is not pronounced. Okay, we have some more, we have some more examples in the chat from silent Bs. Anjay says lamb. Yeah, that's a great example. Thank you, Anjay. Lamb. Lamb, there is no B sound in lamb. Okay, this is silent. So this is for G. Remember, G is not pronounced when it comes before an N. Champagne, foreign, sign, design. But there are some exceptions because English has many, many exceptions. So listen to these ones. Magnet, cognitive, signature. In these examples, the G sound is pronounced. So it's not pronounced in champagne, foreign, sign, design. But it is pronounced in magnet, cognitive and signature. So English spelling and English pronunciation don't match. There are some rules we can follow, but mostly the rules are, there are exceptions to those rules, I mean. So we have to be careful with that. Okay, next one. Yes, Zhonghua, we don't, we don't pronounce the red letters right. Next one we have silent K, that's also a very common silent letter. So K is pr not pronounced when it comes before an N at the beginning of a word. Examples, knife, knee, no, knock, knowledge. There is no K sound in these words. And this is very common, so if you, have, if you know of any more examples, please let us know. In the chat box. Uh, okay, some questions. So, Lullaby says, not pronounce if it is in the last part of the word. Yes, right. Right, that is for another one. Uh, Meg Hanna says, night. Yes, night, K-N-I-G-H-T, like the old warriors with the swords. Those are not, that's not pronounced with a K. Right. Okay, so these are silent letters. These often cause pronunciation problems for many learners and they end up pronouncing these words wrong. So be careful with that. Okay, next one is words with a silent L sound. 
for example, for the rule, the rule is that L is n not pronounced after the vowels A, O, and U. A, O, and U. There is no L sound after these vowels. Examples. Calm. Half. Talk. Walk. Would. Should. Could. Calf. And salmon. Salmon. Listen again. I will say them through and I want you to please repeat them after me. Calm. Half. Talk. Walk. Would. Should. Could. Calf. Salmon. So these are examples when the L is not pronounced. But remember the rule is not pronounced after the vowels A, O, or U. So calm, the vowel is A. Half, A. Would, A. Uh, the vowel is A, uh, A, uh, but the last letter is U. So when the vowel A, O, or U comes first and the next letter is an L, usually the L is not pronounced. But of course there are some exceptions because English is a confusing language. So these are some exceptions. Halo is one example. If you played the video game, Halo, L is pronounced. Bulk, bulk, like to buy a lot of food at one time. We can say I'm buying a bulk of food. Sulk, which is to be sad. Sulk, L is pronounced. Hold, sold, fold. The L in these is pronounced. So you have to be careful because there is a rule. The rule is that L is not pronounced after the vowels A, O, and U. However, there are many, many examples in English where it is pronounced. English is a pretty messy language, I think. We can say that. Um, someone, a student asked just now, where is your tongue when you pronounce a silent L? Uh, well, it's totally silent, so your tongue is just where the vowel sound is. So you don't use you don't use um, your tongue. So whatever the vowel sound comes before, that's where your tongue should be. Calm. The tongue is just on ah. Calm. Okay, guys. So for these ones, do you have any other examples of words with silent l? So lullaby Mama wrote cold. So in cold, the L is pronounced, so that would be an exception. Rokio wrote folk. Yes, folk, F-O-L-K. It's not folk, it's folk, like folk. For example, folk music. Do you have any other examples? No problem. You said thank you, that's fine. I can't read your name. I think you might be Japanese, but I can't, I can't read Japanese, so... Okay, right, you can write it in the chat. Now let's look. <laughs> Jonghua wrote, Fak, Falk, Fak, Fak. <laughs> Jong, Jonghua, I'm not sure what that word means, actually. I think maybe F O L K, which is folk. Yes, uh, talk. Right, it's a great example. Talk. Talk has no L sound, not talk, it's talk. Same for chalk, when you write on a board, blackboard, with chalk. There are lots and lots of examples. Okay, so we've done number one, silent letters. Now let's look at number two, another common reason why students can mispronounce words. And this is because of silent syllables. So firstly, a syllable is one unit of a word. Words are made up of syllables. So a word like dog only has one syllable. A word like movie, movie, has two syllables. A word like building, building, has two syllables. Lot, you can count the syllables in words. So words are made up of different syllables. The rule for a syllable is that one syllable has one vowel sound. It's a bit, there are many except many different complicated rules, but that's the main rule. One syllable, it consists of one vowel sound. 
English, however, sometimes has silent syllables, especially in longer words. So some words in English pronunciation can lose a syllable when they are said quickly. So listen to this word. I'm going to say this word twice, and it has two pronunciations. We can say specialist, 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 or we can say specialist. Very quickly, specialist, specialist. One more time. Number one, specialist, specialist. Number two, specialist, specialist. So. Sometimes the shua sound, the shua is this sound by here and in this word, and it's pronounced like uh, uh. This is sometimes optional in longer words, so you can say, you can change specialist to two syllables, specialist, specialist. The word can have two syllables or three syllables. So when can a silent syllable occur? So silent syllables are common in three words that have three or more syllables, where there is a weak sound followed by one of these sounds, l, r, or n. Both pronunciations, including the shua, the uh sound, or without it as a silent syllable, are correct. However, when you're speaking quickly, it's better to drop it. Better to use a silent syllable. So here are some really common examples that students sometimes confuse. So number one, listen to how I say these words with, with the shua, with the shua sound. So it have extra syllable. We can say chocolate, temperature, temperature, bakery, bakery, family, family. Average, average, restaurant, restaurant, especially, especially. So these are the words spoken in their full form. But when we're speaking very quickly, we often remove this sound here. So this syllable becomes silent. That's why we call it a silent syllable. So now I'll say these words much quicker. And I want you to listen and then also repeat after me without this extra sound here, without the shua sound. Okay, ready? Chocolate. Chocolate. Two syllables. Chocolate. Next one. Temperature. 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 Three syllables. Temperature. Bakery, 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 two syllables, bakery. Number four, family, family, two syllables, family. Number five, average, 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 two syllables. Number six, restaurant, restaurant. Restaurant, two syllables. And number seven, number seven, especially, especially, especially. So guys, so remember that this silent syllable always takes the shua, and sometimes it can be pronounced if you're speaking slower, but oftentimes when you're speaking quickly, you'll hear this without the shua sound, so it becomes a silent syllable. Okay, there are many examples of these. Do you know any more? You can write them in the chat and we can all teach each other. And I'm going to go through some of your questions. So, uh, Lullaby Memo said, is cold an exception? Uh, yes, that would be. Cold, the L is not silent in cold. Uh, Rokia says, folk. Yep, yeah, folk is definitely. And... Uh, Jongwa says, talk. Talk is also a silent L. Uh, Avrik says, thank you. Can you make a video about resume? Uh, do you mean how to write a resume or the pronunciation of resume? Uh, let me know, Avrik. And, oh, English Arts Academy of Karis. <laughs> yeah, she says, restaurant is a hard word to say sometimes. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah. 
And that's because many students try to read it slowly, restaurant. But the pronunciation is different than the spelling. So, of course, when we speak it quickly, we just use restaurant, two syllables. Secretary, yes, secretary, secretary. Yes, not secretary, but secretary. That's, yes, uh, Rokio, right. You're totally right. Okay, lots and lots of examples. If you have any examples, you can write them in the chat or in the comments below. But let's move on. So this is the last area we're going to focus on of words which have difficult pronunciations. Again, because of their lack of consistency between English spelling and English pronunciation. So, uh, number three. Okay, it's a bit, bit, bit complicated, but so combinations of vowels. When the word has E, I, U, or O, but R is in the middle of the word, we actually all pronounce these words in exactly the same way. So let's look at some examples. I have 11 examples for you. So we have girl, turn, term, turn, burn, shirt, skirt, bird, early, thirsty, dirty, and work. Now, what's interesting here is that in the spelling, these all have different vowels. We have the I, E, U, U, I, 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 A, I, I, and O. These have different vowel sounds, but when we're speaking, they all take exactly the same vowel sound. So, girl and term have the same vowel, even though the spelling is different. Same for number two and number three. Term and turn exactly the same vowel sound. So this makes it quite tricky sometimes many, especially beginner students, they pronounce the letter the way it probably should be pronounced, but actually the vowel sound in the pronunciation is different. It takes the er uh sound. So there are many examples of these guys. So do you have any idea, any more? You can write them in the comments below. Anjay wrote turtle. Yeah, that's a great example, right? In the word turtle, what follows, it is the R. So remember, I, I should make it clearer. Remember, in these words here, like in girl, it always, the vowel is always followed by the R. So I, R, E, R, U, R, uh, I, R, where else? A, R, and O, R. They always, these vowels are followed by, by the R sound. So it takes the U uh vowel sound. And of course, this is in British English. In American English, they actually pronounce the R sound a bit more strongly. In the British English, we don't pronounce the R sound. Okay, there's some more examples. Turtle, curly, curl, sure, sure, yeah, sure, care. Yeah, these are all good examples, right? Okay, cool. All right, guys, so 